everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Caitlin, and today we are going to be doing episode two of The Design Diaries, which is a series I started here on my channel about two months ago, where I just take you guys along with me on a journey as I sew and design things. This piece comes highly, highly requested by you guys. Today we are making the iconic bubble skirt that I wear all the time on this channel. It's my favorite skirt that I've ever made by far, and it's just such a wardrobe staple for me. So let's get into a little bit about the plan and what I'm going to be doing, what I'm gonna be using to creating it. This one is also going to be a little bit more tutorial style than the last one because a lot of you want to know how to make this, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. Just a little disclaimer though, this is by no means a professional bubble skirt. Personally, whenever I go to the store and I look for bubble skirts, they don't have enough poof to them and they're just not structured enough. I find that this method gives you a lot of structure, but it's not the tidiest method because you are using elastic. I'm not getting rid of any excess fabric because I like having more fabric than is necessary just to really give it that extra volume. So I just wanted to put that out there first, but if you're still interested, I'm gonna share with you how to do it in this video, so keep watching. Okay, so a little bit of backstory on this. I was not planning to do this video anytime soon. I was going to eventually do a bubble skirt, but I just wanted to wait because I have some other projects on the go. I'm actually in sewing classes right now and I'm making a shirt for my boyfriend as well. So I have a lot going on. I wasn't planning on doing this, but the other day I was going over to my boyfriend's house. I was down at my cottage for the weekend and I only brought one outfit with me for that day. And while I was doing up the zipper, like the zipper broke, the thing came off, so I couldn't wear it. <laughs> and I only had my clothes from the day before, which I spilled coffee on. So I had nothing to wear. I had to like throw those clothes on and go to the mall quickly and just buy an outfit. And it was a really tiny mall. They didn't have a lot of options. They didn't have any of the regular stores that I shop at either, like Zara, H&M, nothing. All they had was a dynamite there. So that's where I went. And I bought this gorgeous two piece that I'm actually wearing right now. And I am completely in love with the top. I think it's gorgeous. And honestly, the skirt is really gorgeous too. It's just not necessarily my style. And I've been going back and forth. I even asked you guys on Instagram for your opinion and I think like 85% of you voted that I turn it into a bubble skirt. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I think that since this top part is so poofy and has so much volume, I think a bubble skirt is the perfect thing to pair it with. It's going to be super princessy and high fashion and I'm really excited. So I'm going to back you guys up a little bit and show you the skirt so you can get a good idea of what the before is and what kind of work we're gonna have to do on it. Just so you know, if you are doing this at home, here is the supplies you're going to need. You can either make your own skirt, but I'm not doing that in this video, so this isn't a tutorial for that, or you can get your own skirt, one that you already have. Make sure it's long. This skirt that I'm using touches the floor, and this is something that I learned from the first time that I did it. I used more of a midi skirt than a full maxi skirt. Because of that, the skirt is a little bit short, and if I do need to make it a little bit longer on that bubble skirt, it's not uncomfortable per se, but it could be more comfortable. <laughs> it's definitely not like I'm there sitting in that skirt like, oh, this is terrible or anything like that. It's just that I could improve, I could do better, which is what I'm hoping to do with this one. So make sure you have a long skirt. You're just gonna need a thread, a sewing machine, and then a thick elastic. So the one that I have is just under an inch. And I would say even if you could go up to an inch, I would recommend doing that. But that's it, that's all the supplies you need. It's really straightforward, so I will show you the skirt now. So this is the skirt that I'm going to be using and I'm gonna turn this into a bubble skirt. I think it's gonna look really cute. I actually like the way it looks now and that's why I've been a little bit hesitant to do it to this one. But then I keep thinking in my head that the reason I like this skirt is because it goes so well with this top, but I don't think that I would wear it separately from this one. Whereas if I made it into a bubble skirt, I would wear it with so many different things all the time. And I just think that because this one is poofy, the skirt should be really poofy and fun too. So I think this will be a good candidate for what I want to do. So just a little quick note, this skirt here actually has a little slit in it. So the very first thing I'm gonna have to do is sew up that slit so that there's no awkward like gap once we do the bubble skirt. But aside from that, that's the only extra stuff I'm gonna have to do that you probably won't have to unless you go out and buy this exact skirt. And now that you guys kind of know the plan, let's get started with the actual design process. 
Okay, so welcome to the sewing area. The lighting is really harsh on my face, but this was the best that I can do in this space, so bear with me. Um, I've got the skirt right here, and I've just been looking around for some thread, and I actually have some thread that matches really, really perfectly, but this is all I have left. There's not a ton of sewing for this project, so I'm hoping this will be enough. I still have to spin the bobbin though, so that's what I'm gonna do now, and then we will get started. Okay, so I just spun the bobbin and there's like almost absolutely no thread left. I have a couple of other ones that I could use that aren't the same color, but they're close enough and it should work anyways. Like you're not really gonna see the thread, so it won't super matter or anything. And this was kind of just like a whim of a project. So that's why I don't have the perfect color, but I'm gonna work with what I have and it's gonna be fine. So like I said upstairs, my first step is going to be to sew up this slit. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to unstitch this little finished hem and then I'm going to sew both sides of the slit together and that will be that and we'll get into the fun stuff. Okay, so I stitch ripped the entire slit and I sewed it all up so it's completely closed. It took forever, I hate stitch ripping, it's the worst, but I threw on an episode of Once Upon a Time and I got through it like an hour later. But now I'm going to show you the next step. So. What you're gonna do is you're going to want to take some measuring tape and you're gonna want to measure around your waist, wherever the waistband is. So for me, the waistband is pretty much right here, so that's where I'm gonna be measuring. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract about half an inch because I want it to be a little bit tighter than my actual waist. Then you are going to take that elastic and you're gonna cut that amount off. If I can find the start of this, I got this like giant roll of elastic from a fabric factory and it was really cheap. So I've got a ton of it. Okay, so then you're gonna cut that same amount in the elastic. And that should be the perfect amount to go around your waist. Check it out, make sure it's good and that it fits. There should be a little bit of stretch to it, like you should have to stretch it a tiny bit, but not too much. So the next step is going to be to make sure you know how thick of an elastic you're dealing with. I recommend using a thick elastic over a really thin one because it has to be able to hold up and support. So I think mine is just under an inch. Yep, yeah, it's about three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to sew the hem of this an inch all the way around just so that I have some wiggle room and we can insert the elastic in that once that's done. So that's the next step. I'm going to start by pinning it up. Okay, so I finished pinning it one inch all the way around. I'm gonna sew it. What's really important for this is you wanna make sure that you don't close the hem all the way. So keep an opening so that we can insert the elastic later. We're gonna close it. We are gonna close it eventually, just not yet. So make sure you leave that little opening on both sides, okay? So you wanna leave about this much not closed and do it on the seam, that way it's nice and neat. Okay, so now it's sewn up. I'm almost done for the night because it's getting late. It's almost 11. So I'm going to do this last step and then I will finish tomorrow and show you guys the results. But basically what you're gonna wanna do is take that strand of elastic that you cut earlier and you're gonna wanna take a safety pin. So this is much easier when you have a big safety pin. So I'm using this one here, it's quite large. And all you're gonna do is open the safety pin and pin it to the front of your elastic like this and then close it up. What that's gonna do is it's gonna make it easy for you to fish through the fabric. And this is gonna take a little bit of time just because there's a lot more fabric than there is elastic. You've really gotta stretch the elastic all the way around the fabric. So you're gonna go to where you just sewed up your hem and you're gonna find that opening that you left. In my case, I did not make it big enough, so I'm just going to stitch trip a little tiny bit. Okay, so what you should have is a hem that looks like this. And if you can see, I left this little part open, it's not sewed up. 
So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to insert it into here. And then I'm gonna pull the elastic in. So the safety pin is so that it doesn't get lost and you're just gonna keep pushing the fabric and then pull the elastic, okay? So push the fabric on like this. Come closer so you can see. Push the fabric, push the fabric, push the fabric. Grab your safety pin, pull. Okay, that's what you wanna do and you wanna do that all the way around. Make sure not to lose this end, okay? So let's keep going. You can already see it's getting elastic-y. For your own comfort, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you keep the elastic moving the same direction, not getting all twisty. So it just takes a little bit of work and patience. Okay, so I just wanted to show you really quickly. I fed it through the whole thing and it looks like this. So you can see this is the little safety pin that I had and there's still some extra. So I'm just going to work the extra into it by shifting the fabric over and making it stretch out a little bit more. And then I'm going to just pin these two ends together and I'm going to finish it off and sew it together and hand stitch it tomorrow. Okay, I'm back. So it's been a few days. Um, ignore my really frizzy hair. I didn't really feel like getting ready today, like doing my hair and makeup, so I didn't. I put like a little bit of eye makeup on for work and that was pretty much it. So yeah, I'm a bit of a mess today, but that's okay. I'm just tired. <laughs> it's been a long few weeks, but I'm back and Anyways, that doesn't matter. What does matter is the next step of this skirt. So at, I think I left off, we had just pinned this with a safety pin. Um, at this point, you're gonna wanna try the skirt on and see how that elastic feels when it's up against your waist. You want to make sure that it's not too tight and not too loose and adjust it as necessary. If you want a little bit more poof, you might wanna try tightening it, which is what I ended up doing. So I tightened mine a little bit. I think I might even loosen it just a little bit now because I think I might have tightened it a little bit too much. So once you've done that and you've measured it and you've made sure it's all good, what you're gonna do is you're going to want to sew this elastic together and then cut it. So that's what I'm gonna do now on my machine. So just to let you guys know, you're just gonna wanna sew back and forth multiple times to reinforce it, so that's what I'm doing now. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to take the safety pin out and I'm just going to cut the elastic above where I just sewed. And then I'm gonna pull the elastic all the way in and I'm just going to even out all of this gathering. All right, so the final step that I'm going to be doing now that the elastic is in, I'm just going to be hand stitching this little part here closed to make sure the elastic doesn't just go all over the place. So I'm gonna do that now and then the skirt will actually be finished. Another option you have is to stitch it wherever you want it to stay lengthwise. I'm not gonna do that because personally, I like to be able to adjust the length. I can make it a longer bubble skirt. I can make it a shorter bubble skirt depending on how I pull this elastic up and where I want it to sit. So I'm just gonna leave it. It's your choice if you do want to hand stitch it into place and leave it. It is a little bit easier that way, but I just like having options with my clothes. Like I said, this is kind of like a DIY crafty method. This is by no means like a professional sew method. It's very easy to do at home yourself, which is why I thought it would be great to share with you guys like this little kind of life hack, I guess. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna hand stitch this, and then I will show you guys the final results. that was the finished skirt I'm really happy with the way that it turned out it's not quite as poofy as my first bubble skirt but that was for no reason other than the first one had like a ton of pleats on it so the pleats all made more poofs so that's a tip if you are looking for like a really poofy one try to go for a pleated skirt 
but I still love the way this turned out. I think it's so cute and girly and it's definitely more my style than the original one was, so I'm very happy. But you guys, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because it's really late and I haven't slept in days and I wanna go to bed. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for watching. If you guys end up doing this yourself, make sure to send me your pictures over on Instagram. I will leave it linked in my description. Also, I keep forgetting to remind you guys, but make sure you go to enter my giveaway. It's the recent Chic Wish video. I will leave it here for you. I also forgot to mention when I will be closing that giveaway, so I decided to keep it open for a month. So it will be closing soon. July 23rd it will be closing, and then I will announce the winner over on my Instagram. All of the rules are in that description for the video, so just go check that out, and good luck to all of you. I will see you all in my next video. Bye!